Good morning, everybody. I hope you had a great last few days for Thanksgiving. And here we are again. Here we are again. And uh, I mentioned this a little bit on Wednesday night at our Thanksgiving Eve service. Uh, But for the rest of you who weren't there, let me just share with you some of the insights to my brain at this time of the year. See, this is the 33rd year that I've been preaching at Christmas. The 33rd year. And every year in recent years, I'm like, what do I say? Like when you've done something so many times and you get to it again and you go, what can I say that's not already been said? What can I talk about that they don't already know? How am I going to go about that? And so I went through a bit of a not so good phase and I'm thinking about what to say and I'm like, I need to be creative. I need to come up with something brilliant that they've never heard of before. And all of that is a trap. It's just a trap. And then eventually I realized, Des, you're an idiot. Why would you try and perform and not preach? Why why would you try to come up with something that's not there? And why not lean into the truth of what is there? Because even though the truth of Christmas is the same year in, year out, because my King is the same yesterday, today, forever, We are not. This time last year, your world was different. For some of you, drastically different. The reality is, where you were and where you are and where you're going to be is constantly changing. And we're going to go there this season and be real about where are you right now and honesty. And I made a decision, so Des, stop pretending. Stop faking it till you make it. Stop like trying to come up with some brilliant creative idea that people will be impressed with. Let's go to what is true because if we engage and we open our hearts and our ears and our minds, our very soul to the richness of this season, transformation awaits us. And not just us, but the people around us. And so, yes, we're going to go on a journey for the next four weeks and we'll look at these core themes of this Advent season, coming events. But I want us to get a fresh revelation, a fresh insight, but more importantly, a fresh impact of what does it mean for us, for those around us. And in so doing, it's just come alive again. Really come alive again. Now, with that in mind, I mentioned last week that one of the biggest things we can be doing this season is thinking outside of ourselves and saying, who do I know in and around my life who right now I really want them to encounter who Jesus really is? I want them to come into this gift of what it says there. This is good news. Some of you have forgotten that it is good news that God brought to us. Good news. It says in Luke 2, verse 10, but the angel said to them, so here's the image. You can see a nativity scene. There's the shepherds in the field, all of that. But just go there. It's nighttime. The shepherds are there. An angel comes, verse 10 of chapter 2, and says to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news. That will cause great joy for all the people. Who needs a fresh dose of joy? Here's the reality. I think some of us have forgotten what's so good about that good news. It's not good news. It's great news. It's it's life-transforming news. It's eternity-changing news. It's good news. And until we can get a revival in our own soul of how good this is, that's going to help you fuel what we've got right now. So in the lobby, on the stands, we've got these Christmas information cards just times of our gatherings over December. Now, these are not just for you to put on your refrigerator because you forget things. They're they're, they're literally just simple, what have you got to lose, telling other people invitation cards. And we said that what we're going to do tomorrow night at We Pray, and if you've never been to We Pray, if you're going to come to one, tomorrow is the one. Tomorrow... Number one, it's the best way to lay up for this season. Number two, many of us in this season need a space and a place 
where the church, what Jesus called us to be, is a house of prayer. And to come into a dwelling space that is unique. We pray nights are so unique, so special. We start at seven tomorrow night, about an hour or so. But part of that night is going to be really bringing into prayer people who are on our hearts and minds that we long to see encounter Jesus, especially this season. We're going to lean into that. It's a very dynamic, interactive evening. If you don't think, yeah, but I don't pray with people, you don't need to. Trust me. Like, you, you need to be here tomorrow night. So significant. But these invite cards, please grab a bunch and just start mentioning it. Just, just you know, for your information, people want to know, then you can invite them any of these Sundays. Every Sunday is just a Christmas-centric heart of the gospel, the good news. And then... As we go through these themes of hope and peace and joy and love, there is a world out there, even in your heart, you are craving all of those things. You're desperately in need of hope. You're desperately in need of peace. And the people around us are craving for peace, a craving for a revival of joy, a craving for the power of overwhelming love in our life. That's so needed. But as we get towards Christmas Eve, what we're doing this year, we've done it before, on the 23rd at seven in the evening, we'll have a gathering in here. And then we have three identical gatherings. The seven o'clock on the 23rd, that's here. That's because some people have commitments Christmas Eve with other family. This removes that obstacle for you inviting people. Oh, I can't come Christmas Eve because I have family. That's okay, we have the 23rd, you know? So seven o'clock on that night, that starts the first of three identical ones. Christmas Eve at three and five in the afternoon, identical again, you can come. We've got childcare available during those services. Come, bring your friends, bring your family on those times. Then at 11 at night on Christmas Eve is a unique gathering. It's not the same as the other ones. If you've, oh, it's, it's great. Like, great, great. And like 11 at night, yeah. And close out at midnight, it's just beautiful. It's a really, anyway. Um, I think we had like 500 people show up last year at 11 at night. So don't think like, it's amazing. So um, you can double dip at Christmas Eve because they are separate um, formats, all right? Oh, oh, I forgot to say that the nine. On the 29th, that Sunday between Christmas and New Year, we are, it's an online only gathering. We're giving all of our team opportunity to be with their friends and family in this really busy season. So we will not be gathering in person on the 29th, but we'll have ready for you an online service for you to engage with on the 29th, just to let you know, all right? So if you wanna come here on the 29th, Enjoy the parking lot. That's, that's all good. All right? Because this won't be open. Okay? And then January 5th, I'll kick off my word for the year. But that's then. All right. Get going, Des. Here's what got me to help me as we go into this season. I'm going to read John 1, verse 1 through 14, every single word. Here's the why. Some of us need to go to what we've heard before and seen before, but afresh get ready for the living, breathing, active Word of God to impact your soul. And it did mine, and it set me up for this season in a way that I really desperately needed, especially today as we talk about hope. John 1, it's not on screen, the text. I want you to hear it, all right? Open your ears and hear this truth right now. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Some of you have forgotten that. Some of you are looking at dark situations and dark circumstances and you think it's dark. The light will always overcome that darkness. His name is Jesus. Always. 
So we need to be reminded, however dark it feels right now, the light will not be overcome by that darkness. Will not be overcome by that darkness. You need to have an awakening of that today. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world didn't recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor a human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. I love how Eugene Peterson puts this line. He writes it, the word became a man and moved into the neighborhood. We have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace, isn't that good news, and truth. Full of grace, undeserved, unmerited favor upon us, and truth. Full of that. You see, the reality is, you've heard that text before, but you're different. Your real world is different. Your circumstance is different. Some of you need to know, what does it mean for light to enter into my world today, tomorrow, these situations? What does that light look like? It is hope. What is hope? Hope is not just a, I hope so. You'll hear more about, as I talk about hope today, there's so much more. Hope is not just a feeling. Hope is not just a faith statement. Hope has a name. Hope has a name. His name is Jesus. So when we're hoping for something, we're not hoping just for something, we are hoping in someone. I'll get into that today as we move on. You see, the king of hope is here. Isaiah, 700 years before Jesus, proclaimed, and he will be given these multiple names, and one of them is Emmanuel, which means God with us. Again, you've heard it before. Yeah, yeah, I know that, God with us. No, what does that mean Right now, he is with us. You can look back on yesterday, last week, this last year, he was with you. Did you see him? How bright is that light? How helpful has that been? How grace bringing has that been? He is with right here today, with you. And so when you look at tomorrow, when you look at this season, you look towards the end of the year, there is a hope that is an assurance that he is with. And and how does that affect how you go about your life? Isaiah said in verse 9, verse 2 of chapter 9, let me read this verse. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, or one text says, on those living in the valley of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. What I do love about this time of year is that it's the one time of the year where people do not give a rip about the power grid. Let's just blow it up. Let's add ridiculous amounts of lights. Let's just go for it all around our neighborhoods. I love it. What is normally just a normal basic neighborhood, we we drive around them at nighttime now, which any other time of the year is a bit sketchy. Let's just drive around people's neighborhoods at night. But now you drive around because of the lights. People put these lights out. They decorate their homes. I love it. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. What they don't realize is that why do they do that? Because the light of the world came. Now they want to embrace 
the benefit of it, but still not know the one in whom really came in the first place. But I'll go there, but it's great. I love that. The people decorate, some people go all out, some people a little scroogey, I get it. But it's so good. I, there is something powerful about it. Even this year, I want you, as you see multiple, multiple lights, know that a light has dawned. You see, it's the only time of the year that people want to go out at night more than in the day. There's no interest in driving around the neighborhood at night normally, but there is now. And so Christmas, all the scenes of Christmas are even geared around nighttime. Have you noticed? We even think the nativity is kind of like nighttime. We know it was days and weeks, but we, we nighttime, and it's this image of darkness and light appearing. Yes, there's a star, so it must have been night, but that's not the whole story. But there's something about that. It's nighttime. The scene is nighttime. But what Isaiah is saying here is, no, it's a new day. Something has dawned. There's a sunrise. There's a new day. Some of you need to realize that where you are right now, there's a new day. There is always new things available from God. His mercy is new every morning. I want us to look at this season and go, this year, Lord, in my heart, in my soul, would you revive and bring a sunrise to it in spite of my circumstances? And so the best way to encounter hope this year for all of us is to start with yourself and be honest. Let's just be really honest. Where are you at right now? How are you doing? Like really, how are you? As we get to this year, it's real different. Some of you are encountering this season for the first time with somebody not here. I get it. Some of you, there is somebody here that wasn't here last year. Somebody, your identity. Some of you, your name has changed this year. Some of you, you've got friends that you didn't have last year. Families are different. You've got new jobs, a new location. You've got lots of newness. Some of you can look at it. Let me ask you some questions. Like, how, how's it going? And I thought about this, and can I start with this one? For some of you, I say, how's it going? Your answer might be, really good. Say so. Some of you go, oh, I don't want to share how great life is right now because theirs isn't so great, so I don't want to make them feel bad. No, infect us with your goodness. If life is awesome, be awesome. It's good. Live in that joyfulness. I'm giving you permission to say, when people say, how are you doing? If you're feeling great, say, amazing. Great, why? Good. Because the person who's struggling right now, that is a voice of hope. It's good. How you doing right now? Okay. Okay's okay. Okay's okay. Can we just be real and honest? Maybe some of you are overwhelmed right now. It's like, yeah, every year it comes around, I'm overwhelmed. All right. Just, just that's how I feel right now. Maybe you've got some internal struggles and nobody knows about them. You're just internally dealing with them. Struggles. Be real with that. Have you noticed when Jesus said, come to me, all you who are always awesome? Now come to me, all you who are weary, burdened, heavy laden, and I'll tell you to get a grip and get over it. He didn't say that either. He said, come to me, all you who are weary, heavy, burdened, laden, and I'll give you rest. That's hope. Some of you just need to lean into the reality of his presence of God with us and be honest with him. Maybe some of you are just stressed right now. I met a couple of people out on the porch after the first service, and they've been coming for three weeks, and hey, three or four weeks, and they introduced themselves. And I said, oh, what brought you here? And they're, they're both in PA school. And I went, oh, you're too intelligent to talk to me. Like, they're both in PA school. And they went, yeah, we're both stressed. It's a lot of learning. And I just let in and went, but you chose that. You chose that, it's going to be worth it. Maybe a little bit uphill right now, but it's pain with a purpose. You know, and they went, yeah, it's like, embrace it. It's all right. There's a stress there right now, but okay. It's going to be worth it. Maybe some of you are bored. We often talk about that one, do we? Yeah, struggles and overwhelmed and difficult. I get it, but some of you are just bored. 
My life's just meh. Same old. You're just bored. And you need to shake it up and look different. And some of the things today I'm going to hopefully unlock and help you to see what can help with that. Some of you are in a storm. Some of you it's uncertainty. Some of you look back at this year with regret. Maybe some guilt. Some of you there's some despair. Some of you just hanging on. And you think you can't hang on any longer. He's there. He's with you. He's with you. Some of you need to actually let go to know how much he's with you. Some of you are just tired and you don't know why you're tired. And you're like, I don't know if I'm physically tired, emotionally tired, relationally tired, mentally tired, tired. I don't know. I just feel tired. A little heavy. So are you praying about that? Or are you working it out yourself? You know, are you reading some self-help book? And taking some supplements? Or are you bringing that with all of those things to the Lord and going, just where am I at? And Because you know one of his names is Wonderful Counselor? I, have you realized that? Do you interact? I'm getting ahead of myself. Moving on. There is hope because you can look over your shoulder and you saw him there. Hope was there. The name is Jesus. So hope is there. Hope has a name. We live in hope because he is there waiting for us whilst being active with us. The word hope in the English is just not sufficient enough. It doesn't really help all the time. But you see, in the scriptures, in the Hebrew language, hope and the word waiting were very, very much together. In the Psalms, I think 40 times the word waiting or hope is used. Waiting on the Lord is a posture of hope. It's active and it's very real. It's like I'm waiting on the Lord, not that I hope he will help, but I know he will, it's just when. It's a different posture. I know he is with me and he's here and he's there because I remember him over there. It's active and interactive. They say that there's an English phrase that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Where does that come from? Because they picture a dark place like a tunnel and you, if I keep going sooner or later, oh look, there's a little light at the end of the tunnel and I can go towards it. That imagery. Now with that in mind, you need to understand that if you are in a tunnel right now, it's not what is the light, but who is the light. You see, hope is not about what we hope for, but who we hope in. Let that phrase just stay on the screen for a while. This is not what we hope for, but who we hope in. And I want all of your life in this season, interact with that. As you meet with people, maybe inviting them for Christmas, it's just like, like, where is their hope? Where is their hope? I mean, every time I hear it, I can't help it, it just came to me right then. I, I'm just reminded of Princess Leia putting a message into R2-D2. And she puts this message and it's this phrase, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're our only hope. You have no idea what I just talked about. I'm sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Our hope is not what we hope for, it's who we hope in. And he is alive. He is the same yesterday, today, forever. He has demonstrated his love for us in all things. His presence is so powerful. He comes and dwells in the midst of appraising people. He comes with his forgiveness, his restoration, his redemption, his justification. He comes with his salvation. He comes with his strength. He comes with his courage. He comes with his comfort. And as we lean into this, you hear the beauty of, even in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me the psalmist writes that you are with me he doesn't just say you're with me in the good days or the bad days but even in the valley of the shadow of death I said it in our Psalm 23 series the only way you can have a shadow is if the sun's shining somewhere because it's the sun that causes the shadow so even in a dark time situation he's still shining and I'll fear no evil, for he is with me. 
The promise of hope is why we're here today. There's a promise of hope arriving, but it's a fulfillment of hope that dwells with us. He is with us. Now, it's good news. It's good news if you're experiencing unknown, uncertain darkness around you. There's good news because hope is here. Let's read Isaiah 9, verse 6. For to us, a child is born. God looked and he went, it's time. He longed to have relationship and oneness with his creation again. And he knew there was only one way, the ultimate gift, ultimate sacrifice. Government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. I'll say it again. In your prayer time this season, Wonderful Counselor. Lord, I need your wisdom. I need your insight. I need you just to talk to me. Help me in this situation because I'm trying to work it out and it's not working. Bring your counsel. The Holy Spirit is given that name to dwell in you. He is mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. It goes on to say, of the increase of his peace, there will be no end. And it goes on to say, and he shall reign, he shall reign forever and ever. So, so you know my car is my cathedral, yeah? My little praise box. So I'm in the car. So this morning, I, I'm on the driveway and I'm going, all right, it's December 1st. Permission for Christmas music is now granted. <laughs> what am I going to do? In my journey here, and I literally, I paused on the driveway. And then I was reminded, I'm thinking, Isaiah 9, and he shall reign forever and ever, and then boom, because I've got this weird repertoire of music in my background, it came up, and then it came to me. I hear people complain about modern worship songs because they're so repetitive. You should have had a conversation with Handel then. Because if you listen to Handel's Messiah, and you listen to the Hallelujah Chorus, that's a long song with not many words. There's a lot of repetition, because every time it gets repeated, it just gets more yes. The hallelujah chorus, I mean hallelujah, come on now, hallelujah. It said a lot in the hallelujah chorus. But then there's this line in it, you know, and he shall reign forever and ever. And they keep telling us that in that song a lot. They keep repeating it. And as I put it, I put it on this morning. That was my song on the way here, the hallelujah chorus. I was being all sophisticated, all dignified, ish. Till I started singing and almost ripped my lungs. And so, and I, and as it, and I went, oh. And I just paused and I went, I saw you reigning, Jesus, a month ago. I, I felt you reigning then. I know you're reigning now. And my hope and my trust is you, you will reign forever and ever. And you picture situations and circumstances. And you go, oh, King Jesus, would it be quite clear that you are seated on the throne today in your house and we as your sons and your daughters bask in your presence? Because you said 700 years before your arrival on earth that and he shall reign forever and ever. And we're living in the forever and ever. And I just paused and I went, one line. And it wasn't the hallelujah of the hallelujah chorus, which is awesome, which got me. It was that one line today. And he shall reign. And you just start to navigate all the different situations and people in and around your life and go, would you reveal to them, to that, to this, you're reigning. He said his throne isn't distant. Because the scriptures go on to say, let us therefore approach his throne of grace with confidence. He, he wants to say, yeah, I'm seated on my throne. Gather around. What kind of God is this that comes to us 
Every other world religion is how do we get to God? How do we earn God? How do we get to him? But our God in heaven sends his son and comes to us and continues to come to us. As I said last week, the image of the the son, the prodigal son returning to the father. The father was always looking and he runs out to meet him. Some of you need that reality that hope is not just waiting for you. Hope is on the starting blocks ready to get to you faster than you can imagine. It's a beautiful, beautiful image. Let's encounter and embrace hope today. And let it fill you so much that the overspill from you, other people just go, there's some hope there. There's some hope there. I I mentioned this briefly in in the first service. I I got the privilege of officiating a wedding yesterday and there are not people who come to Grace and I really like that. Anyway, so I was just engaging and, and yeah, I had a rehearsal on Friday. The groom... And he came to me and I had not seen him for a while and he went, hey, I'm really sorry to hear about your dad. And I went, I appreciate that, thanks. And he said, oh, how long are you in England for? We had a little brief conversation and I just briefly mentioned, I said, I know, I said, like, we booked the tickets to be there four months ago at that date. Four months ago, we booked those tickets. Little did I know that from day one, it was the last three and a half days of my dad's life. Like, who would have known and, and we just had a brief conversation. And this is a guy who's not following Jesus, and, and he just went, huh, sounds like God did that for you. I went, yeah, I know he did. Like, I, 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 I know he did. I, I just, is this possible? That the affirmation of the Lord saying, see, I'm always with you, came in the most unexpected little conversation. It's always there. We're just not listening, are we? We're just not listening. And so let's do this right now. Romans 12, 12. This really was like, wow, what a verse. Romans 12, 12 says this, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. There's three hours there, isn't there, in that text? We don't have three hours. We have a few minutes. But let me remind you of this. What does it mean to be joyful in hope? Well, those who are here Wednesday night, I want to remind you again. Being joyful in hope is choosing. I'm going to put on a garment of praise. I'm going to put on a a coat of thanksgiving. I'm going to choose to wear a garment of praise. The circumstances around me don't need to change, but I change when I put on a garment of praise because my posture and my identity is I am here to praise the one from whom everything flows. Put on a garment of praise is choosing to be joyful in hope. This morning when I get in the car and I put the music on, it was a choice to put on a garment of praise. And when I did, out of nowhere, it was like, and he shall reign. I'm like, yes. But I chose to put on a garment of praise. Being joyful in hope is choosing that. It's declaring hallelujah But there is a choice in there because why be joyful in hope? Because hope has a name. His name is Jesus. That's what you're being joyful in. You're being joyful. We sang it this morning at the top with joy to the world. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Some of you are craving strength right now. Where are you going for it? But the joy of the Lord is it. Enter into it, wear a garment of praise. Then it goes patient and affliction. This is full of hope. The word patient is that posture of waiting. That root word in the Hebrew of hope and waiting are the same. You're waiting in your affliction, your difficulty. Don't quit, keep waiting. Keep sitting in a posture of hope because he is with you. The outcome is only a when. But be patient in it. Lean in. Don't be isolated in it. 
Lean in. The Lord is there. He is with us. Be patient in that affliction. Those, as Isaiah even again says, those who wait on the Lord, those whose hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They'll renew their strength. There's a posture that you need to take in and it's active and then faithful in prayer. If being joyful in hope is keep praising, being patient in affliction is keep waiting, then faithful in prayer is keep talking. Dialogue with the Lord. Keep talking. Come to him with all of these things. Come to him with the names of people. Yes, Lord, come to him in a situation. Keep talking, sharing with him. Be honest with him. Why, why do we hide things from the Lord as if he doesn't know? Like, how foolish do we look? Bring it to him. The minute detail if you need to. Keep talking. There is something so really drawing in and comforting of keep talking. I said I'd share this. I said it at the nine. It wasn't in my notes. I started talking about it. So I'll share it now at the 11. So not so much now, though, but uh, for many, many years in our marriage, uh, when my wife would like, you know, we'd get in bed and she'd want to fall asleep, she would often go, hey, just talk to me. And I'd say, what do you want, what do you want me to talk about? Uh, I don't care, just talk to me. And he would send her to sleep. I don't know if that was comforting or not comforting, but, but, but true story. I'd like, she'd just, just talk to me, just talk to me. And so she'd be, I'd, I don't care what you talk about, just talk to me. And it would send her to sleep. That's how boring I am <laughs> in my conversation. But, but, but in that image that I'm grateful for, in that image is, is the Lord just saying, just listen, just talk to me. I'll give you rest. Let go. Relax. The good news is you're not God and I am, he says. The good news is I, I understand all that you're going through and I am with you. The good news is we have this time of year to be reminded that hope was arriving as a promise and was fulfilled. And we sit undeserving of it by his grace receiving it. Receiving it. It's quite stunning. So today, this is what we're gonna do. I love the fact that Peter in his epistle says, this hope we're talking about, he calls it a living hope. I love that he adds that before it. It's not just a hope that was and a hope that may be. It's a living hope. It's alive. So, so whatever phrase you have for I hope, it's not a passive thing that was and may be. It's a now active thing. I, I want us to have a restoration and a fresh revelation that what we need right now is hope and hope has a name. And when we were... Uh, we go through this season here and Ali's been preparing for the Christmas season and different songs in different ways. Uh, one song that we've not done for a long, long time. It's not really a Christmas song, but it's Isaiah 9. It's Isaiah 9. And there's this declaration of the names of God. And as we sing it today, I want you to quite literally, maybe one of those names will just grab you. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Emmanuel, God with us, you're here with me. Wonderful counselor, the government is resting on his shoulders. And then we get to it and your names say it all, they say it all. These names of God are to bring us strength and comfort and those whose hope is in the Lord will renew their strength. And today our prayer partners, they'll be down front during this song. Some of you need to come and maybe some of you need to know, do you know what? He is reigning, but I've not been sat at his feet and his throne. I've been worshiping under a different one. I need to fully surrender and come and approach his throne of grace, renewed or for the first time. I need to surrender my whole life to Jesus. Everything in it, he's demonstrated his love for me. While I was still a sinner, he died for me. I need to really renew that strength today. 
and hope. Maybe some of you have got situations and circumstances. You need the wonderful counselor. Come for prayer. Come for prayer. Some of you need a fresh revelation of what it is to actually be in a house of prayer. You need to come tomorrow night. You really do. You really do. So special. And to have a prayer life for others this year. For others that they have a visitation of the one who is hope in their lives. So would you all stand? Let's pray, King Jesus, King Jesus, we give everything and everyone to you. We give everything, everyone to you. Lord, you are the light in our darkness. But Lord, I pray for all of us here right now that as we continue to worship, would you renew us? Would you restore us? Would you revive us to know that we who believe in your name have been given the right to be called children of God? born of God, full of hope. Lord, cause us to spill out hope in our homes, in our workplaces, in the places where we interact with people. Cause us to really want to see other people to encounter your hope as well. We declare who you are in this song, Lord. We declare it. Your name is everything. Knowing that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and confess that you're Lord. Knowing that there is power in the name of Jesus more than any other name. There is no other name that is higher. So come, wonderful counselor. Come, everlasting father. Come, prince of peace. Emmanuel, God with us, come. We receive you. We receive you. Hear our praise right now. You deserve it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you all tomorrow night, everybody.